And our current expert on the subject is Ira Cooper, sitting here in the black t-shirt. And Rick Boatwright is just sitting up here because that's what he does. Same for Lee <laughs> Gore. <laughs> Ira, take it away. Do we need to cut the lights? Um, when we refer to that, we can cut to when it. When we refer to it. Okay. So, welcome everyone. I guess I have to start out by saying I am not a climatologist. And but you play one on TV. No, but he's in Holly and Select. That's where, but that's where I get out my lab coat. Yeah, so what we want to talk about here is historically what was the Little Ice Age like, not just in general, but very in particular in the years that we are looking at, predominantly the 1630s, but we'll look earlier because there will be people that remember what it was like when, you know, I walked through the snow, et cetera, et cetera, and the 1640s are coming up, et cetera. Um, we'll, and we'll look at it not just in terms of raw numbers, which I can throw at you, and you, we will talk about where those raw numbers come from and how reliable they are and do we care, uh, in a bit, and but also you know what this means in terms of its practical effect on how to live, um, and we will also confront only very briefly at the beginning, but more later on, sort of the 800-pound gorilla in the room, which is what is the effect of the ring of fire itself in terms of perturbing that and changing the, the patterns. What? Now, to begin with, with, the part that I'll just talk about briefly goes to <coughs> the difference between weather and climate. And weather is what we're seeing in an hour to hour or day to day basis, or if you live in Massachusetts, a minute to minute basis. And that is going to be totally and completely scrambled by the ring of fire within a matter of, well, it depends on where you are, but within a matter of days. And its effect will be felt around the world within seven or eight days and will continue to mount. And what happens after that, I will talk about later. However, so what does that mean? That means that if, for example, you have a hero who is a historical character, and uh, a year after the Ring of Fire, they sailed across the ocean blue and arrived in Boston on a particular day, you don't really have to worry about what day they arrived historically because I can pretty much guarantee they will not be arriving on that particular day in this new universe because that whole voyage would have been influenced by wind and sea states all across the ocean and those will all be changing. Uh, from one day to the next. That day that they actually arrive historically will work out pretty well as an average, since you won't have a real basis for predicting which way it would have shifted earlier or later as a result of the ring of fire, but it will have changed. And so, yeah, you can get away with making one date the same, but don't try to duplicate that person's whole itinerary in 1633 or 4 or 5 or whatever. It, there's no point in it. It actually will make it, the historical research will make it less plausible rather than more. Okay, so now let's get to the historical part and its effects, and then we'll come back, as I said, to perturbation. So, Little Ice Age, of course, the name itself implies it's cold period, maybe not as bad as the fabled Ice Ages of uh, uh, mammoth times and all the rest, uh, but they're there. 
there is a surprising, or perhaps not so surprising, amount of disagreement as to when the Little Ice Ages began and when they ended. In part, it's because the term got distorted way out. Originally, the term was used to refer to a particular pattern in the European Alps in which the glaciers were most of the time advancing, even those were punctuated by breaks. Maybe even occasionally a little recessing, but that was a period of movement. The definition grew as these definitions have a tendency to grow. So depending on which author you go to, and I once tabulated this, you, I had the earliest date I saw was, I think, 1400. And, but I may have found a few earlier ones, but pretty much they would pick every half century. Nice how it always seemed to yeah, work right. in a half century, all the way up to 1650 as the start. And of course, if it was 1650, we aren't in the Little Ice Age at all. And I'd have to let you all go home early, which I'm not going to do. So we will make a different period. So I pretty much use, as a rule of thumb, 1550 as a good enough working number, particularly given the pattern in Europe where most of the stories are set. There's more consistency as to when it ended. Again, our nice convenient number is 1850, but and I'll be using that, but I've heard 1800, 1830, 1820, 1870, even 1900. And plus there's a small group that said, and it hasn't ended yet. And therefore, you see some of the definitional problems. And of course, part of it is there is no formal definition. This many years for this long below this mean, and what's your reference period and all the rest. But we don't have to worry about that because we're just using it as a working handle. And what's important for the characters is what Little Ice Age means to them and they're getting it because an encyclopedia talked about, say, the problems of the Norse in Greenland or uh, um, uh, the temp freezing over in the 17th century in England or the year without a summer in the early 19th century and so on down the line. So for our purposes, we don't really need to be that precise anyway, but we should recognize that this and a certain amount of underlying definitional give there. But we'll call it 1550 to 1850. Now, another thing, and I really wish I had thought about, you know, you put up the illustrations I had that I used in the article that's in the uh, Grandfield Gazette. And it didn't even occur to me, well, if I actually remember, I could capture some of the other images I've had from books and from the internet and use for illustrations. But I didn't, and uh, I can't pick up from the hotel internet, so I'll have to talk about those. But uh, I can tell you where to find them if you're interested. What, there are a few things you need to know. Do not visualize the little ice age as, you know, one day you wake up and there's ice everywhere and it's like that pretty much for the next couple of centuries. <laughs> it, the, 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 uh, there are warm intervals as well as cold intervals and within a warm interval there may be a shorter cold interval and within a cold interval there's a shorter warm interval and all of which has certain chaotic marks, you know, and so on down the line. It turns out that the 1630s in particular historically were far from the worst period in Europe in, this, in terms of how cold it got, although 1635 was a cold year, but we'll talk about how cold in a moment. But the, the, the peaks, uh, excuse me, the worst period of the 17th century came later in the century than when 
where we are writing and where we will probably ever get to write. But the if you not only do we have this mix of cold I, I don't want you to think that it got all very tropical and balmy in England or Scandinavia at any time during this period as a break, but rather we have these big cold breaks in areas where it got to a more reasonable kind of level. Um, and if you compare different parts, and not even just Europe versus Africa versus North America versus Asia, but even Mediterranean Europe versus uh, Fino Scandinavia versus Iceland, these periods of cold were not necessarily coming at the same time and they were not lasting necessarily for the same period of time. But, and there's a nice illustration in one of Lamb's books, Harold Lamb, who one of the big names in this field where he lines up a half dozen of them and back then they didn't have good data for Africa for example or South America and that could have been thrown into the mix. Uh, and the other thing that and when you see it you'll find that it was not while a little ice age can be sort of a in a general sense can be defined for this period of several centuries. There are parts of the rule where it really wasn't getting cold during this period. China is a notable case. But it's considered to have little ice age effects because there's the other dimension, this temperature. And what's the other variable that matters, say, if you're a farmer? Rain. Precipitation, rain, exactly. So it's a and little bit like the El Nino kind of effect where when we have this kind of weather, they, you know, in uh, South America or, or well, Southern... Well, I don't want to imply... What I'm saying is, you know, of, when it's uh, cold here, it's really warm there, and when it's warm well, there... It, or well, it's just that you have to worry about both dimensions of mm -hmm. it. And so I don't want to imply that there's that seesaw, seesaw effect there. We, we do see seesaws in certain other regional areas, but I don't know of a China-Europe seesaw offhand. Uh, actually, let me take that back. I, I know of something, but it's rather real defined, and it's working on a completely different time scale than what we're, what we're talking about with the little ice. Uh, but we can see, you can run into trouble for reasons other than it got cold. And in China, for example, they had the, a double whammy where within the same year they could be reporting both having droughts and flooding. Uh, actually, that happened for certain periods in Italy as well during the Little Ice Age period. Essentially, you have the problem uh, too much or not enough? Yeah, and you have problem of soil retention of water creating and when problems. It rains. If you don't get the rain early and you get too much rain late, you might as well just stay on the Yeah, star. I mean, I always thought the drought and flood always went hand in hand. Simply because the drought dries up the land and like one rain can flood then because it doesn't sink in. But one thing, if you're looking for a common denominator for the general period, I'm going to get more specific in just a moment, is these were periods where we were seeing substantial temperature and precipitation variability. And the exact patterns different from one part of the world to another, and even from one century.